There are three parts to the perfect vegan drumstick or wing. Today, let's talk about that. I have made a lot of vegan chicken wings in the past, and it's one of my favorite things, is they always come out awesome. Some come out better than others, while some take a lot more work. Let's figure out in this video what it takes to make the perfect vegan drumstick. For this video, we're going to make two versions of drumsticks to see which version and what parts we liked the best. One of the most important parts of the drumstick, but not the only one, is the chicken itself. There are loads of ways to make it, but let's try two of my favorites. Before we make the chicken, let's talk about the second most important part of the wing, the drumstick itself, or the bone. Now I've used loads of different handles for my wings, but recently Faux Bones got a hold of me and asked if I wanted to try their vegan bones. And I clearly had to hide my address, so sorry about that weird, awkward way of holding this. I am blown away with how great these are to use. They're awesome. It made such a huge difference. This is the first product of its kind. I mean, it's it's really, really awesome and it's super unique. And I love for like the rib bones, how there's like different sizes. I'm gonna be really excited to try these in the future here. Having a more realistic bone does a few things for your chicken wings from making it easier to like add the chicken substrate to the bone. And they're super durable. If you're using them at home, you can wash them and reuse them. I mean, multiple times. They're Pretty awesome. So gang, head over to Fobones.net, sign up via text message, and you're gonna get 20% off. You're gonna love these. You're gonna love them. Fobones, thanks for sponsoring today's video and making some pretty killer vegan bones. I mean, how neat is that? It's just cool, what a cool concept. So we're going to be using these faux bones on both of our chicken drumsticks. So now let's make that chicken. So the very first chicken that's up is our jackfruit chicken. It's one of my favorite recipes. I wrote it down in the book, my fried jackfruit chicken. Uh, to start off, we're gonna be using some young green jackfruit. Now you just wanna wash the young green jackfruit. Oh no, not the lid. And then I'm gonna squeeze it. I used to sit and pick out all the seeds, but that really doesn't make a difference. As long as you squeeze them and kind of crush them down, it's gonna work perfect. Now all we're gonna do is just throw a pan with some water over a high heat. Now we just need to add a scoop of our vegan chicken broth mix and then realize we need probably one more scoop. Now we're also gonna add a handful of nutritional yeast, a lot of it. We want this chicken to be kind of savory. Now just whisk it up, bring it up to a simmer, like a slow boil. Once it's up to the boil, then just add your jackfruit. Stir this in and allow it to cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. We want most of the water to boil out and just leave about maybe a quarter cup of that liquid. After the 20 minutes, take it off the heat, let it cool down for a little bit. I'm gonna transfer this into a, uh, into a bowl just to allow it to cool down even more and then just cover it up. Um, we just need to get it below 120 degrees Fahrenheit or just m a little bit more than room temperature. You can be able to tell when you touch it with your hand. Just like I did right here. I got a little ahead of myself. So now we just need to transfer the bowls to a larger mixing bowl because that's what we're going to need. Now I'm going to be adding some protein to this. You can use like pea protein. You could use a few different proteins. I'm using mung bean protein. And then we're going to add my favorite ingredient, methyl cellulose. Methyl cellulose is an incredible binder and gum. It's going to suck up all of that moisture and kind of hold all of this together. Now if your chicken looks like this, that means it's too dry. You can see how I'm like working it. It's not really sticking to my hand. It's turning into a meatball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of extra starch because, you know, that original water got cooked in the jackfruit. And then we're just going to add a touch more water. This should kind of help bring it together and turn it into a little bit more of like this droopy kind of like thing. That's what we're looking for. We want this to be kind of wet. Now for our test, Monica and I are going to be testing out two variations of each chicken. So I have four bones for the jackfruit chicken. Two is going to be with individual skins and Monica and I get to try each individual one that way. Uh, so now we got our faux bones here and what we're gonna do is just wrap the chicken around the faux bone. To do that, I'm gonna be using some cellophane, just a small piece of plastic wrap, toss some of our chicken onto the plastic wrap and then just put the bone over top of the chicken that's there and then just use the cellophane to kind of like wrap it around and shape it into the shape of a chicken wing. Or I always say wing because that's what I grew up with. We called them wings. Everything was wings, even if they were drumsticks. So calm down if I accidentally call them wings in this video. It's just habit, it's what I grew up with. Do you say everything right? So now we just need to repeat the process for all of our wings and then we're just gonna toss toss them onto a tray and throw them into the freezer. Now, I want these frozen solid before I skin them up. It's gonna make them a lot easier to skin, a lot easier to work with. So the jackfruit's done for now. So now let's get ready and move on to our second chicken. We're gonna be doing a seitan chicken but out of vital wheat gluten. Now, we originally planned on making a little less vital wheat gluten, but then I figured I had a little bit left in the bag, so I just kind of dumped it all out in there. It's gonna work out. I just need to kind of figure out the measurements as I go. You could do that with vital wheat gluten. Now, for the rest of this recipe, it's just gonna be some cornstarch, another handful of nutritional yeast, some of our 
vegan chicken broth mix, and then whisk that up. Those are our dry ingredients. That's gonna be pretty good, making a big dust cloud. Now for our wet ingredients, we're pulling out the stick blender. I love this thing. It's been like been my best purchase of 2021. We're gonna be using tofu for the liquid side of this. It kind of helps make it a little bit chewier and um, a little bit more meat-like. So we're just gonna be doing about three quarters of a cup of tofu. I don't need the whole thing. I'm just pressing it in there. And then along with the tofu, we're gonna be adding in some vinegar. Now I'm just using a rice vinegar. And the reason why I'm using that, not much of it, I wish I would have had more, is to kind of like hide and help mask the flavor of the vital wheat gluten. We're also gonna be using a little bit of soy sauce and some extra water. Now just blend that together and then voila, look, that's the liquid of our seitan. Nope, never mind, I messed up. I wanted to add some olive oil. So let's go ahead and toss that in there too and just blend it back up again. And this should emulsify pretty well together. Now at this point, all we're gonna do is just mix that uh, liquid mixture into the vital wheat gluten. And I'm just using like a large, like a cooking chopstick uh, to just mix it up. And we're just gonna mix it until it's fairly shaggy. Then we just need to just kind of bring it together with your hands. Now I'm not gonna need this like crazy. We're gonna be using the autolyze method. That's what I had a video on a little bit ago. And it's really cool where gluten will just form on its own. There's no need for all the work. Now I am going to need it just a little bit, but not much. Just until you see the point to where it's kind of getting stringy like that. That's the texture that I want. Now I'm just gonna throw this into a bowl. We're gonna cover it up and we're just gonna let this sit for about 30, 40 minutes. That's all the Autolyse needs. Boom. Now with the power of YouTube timing, it's been 30 minutes. So we're just gonna bring this back in. Now at this point, we do need to knead and stretch this just a little bit, not much. I wanna stretch it just to get all of those strands going in the same direction. I wanna pull it and really work it out, really stretch it. Now we're just gonna cut this into four equal sizes. We're making four wings or drumsticks. Don't kill me. I know I keep saying it wrong. Now I'm just gonna stretch out each individual piece. I'm trying to get kind of like noodle-like stretches, but with gluten, we're not gonna be able to get it that thin and I want it that thin. So I'm gonna do a little trick. We're gonna stretch it out and then we're gonna cut that stretched out gluten into, into half long ways. Now we just need to bring in our awesome faux bones, the bone of this project and start wrapping. Now this is where faux bones really shines because wrapping seitan around like one of those like sugar cane bones or lemongrass bones, it's pretty friggin' difficult. You know, the lemongrass kind of falls apart. The sugar cane kind of like starts to break and crack where these faux bones are pretty solid. They're made really well and it really makes it kind of, it kind of like really, it really improves this like a seitan chicken wing if that's what you're doing. All we have to do now is just finish up the rest of these. I mean, look at that. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty excited about this. So now we're going to cook them. Now I'm just going to throw just a pan with some water. I have a steamer basket that I'm going to toss in and we're going to steam these for about 30 minutes. Now I, I messed up a little bit. I forgot. I wanted to brush them with a little bit of olive oil before I threw them in the steamer. No big deal. I'll just brush them right now. It's going to work fine. Now let's just throw the lid on and let them steam and they should grow just a little bit. Oh my God, they got huge. Okay, that's okay, it's okay, it's okay, no big deal. They'll they'll start to shrink up after they rest for a little bit. So let's just toss them on the counter and let them cool down. We need them to be cool so we can handle them anyway. So let's just, you know, you can see they're kind of shrinking up right now. They're, they're going back to normal size. So now let's move on to part three of our chicken wings, the skin. For the skin of today's video, we're gonna be using rice paper and soy skin, AKA, tofu skin and sometimes bean curd sheet. I mean, it literally says it right there on the package. I don't know why I didn't call it that. So let's start with the soy skin or bean curd sheets. All we're gonna do is just pull this out and we're gonna unwrap it. Now, some of them come very dry and they're kind of brittle. So just be careful. And some of them are a little bit more like this, which is kind of like more like a fresh bean curd sheet. Uh, so once we have them all unwrapped, we're just gonna cut them into smaller pieces, you know, maybe about the size of the rice paper sheets and then pour boiling water over top of them uh, or just really hot water. You can see almost immediately how it starts to uh, make the soy skin a little bit more translucent. Loosened. Now we're gonna let those rest for about 15, 20 minutes or so. They are gonna cool down to the point to where you can touch them. Then go ahead and pick them up and move them over and start wrapping your wings. Now I will say right off the bat that this particular soy skin that I bought did not work out too well. Most soy skins will kind of stick to itself a little bit where this one wasn't at all. You could see it was just super loose over the chicken and it just, it really never held tight onto it the way that I wanted it to. Now on the second one, I did try to like brush on some cornstarch onto the wing to see if that would help but it, it didn't. So if you can make your own soy skin, it's gonna work phenomenal. If you don't make your own soy skin, I would kind of look for the ones that are dry, the little the ones that get a little crispy. Those ones are the ones that I've used in the past and they've always seemed to stick really well. Now it's time for the rice paper skin. Rice paper skin works really, really great. It's super easy. All we're gonna do is just take a plate filled with water, put the rice paper in and let it soak for a minute until it becomes soft, a little bit softer than that, and then start wrapping your wing. Now at this point, we're just going to repeat the same process for the jackfruit chicken. Now the jackfruit chicken is frozen solid, or at least I thought it was 
was. It's pretty frozen. It's not frozen all the way. It's good enough. That's all that matters. It's it's pretty hard. Wrap it in the soy skin. Wrap it in the rice paper. Now let's make a barbecue rub. I was thinking about doing these as hot wings, but they ended up coming out a little bit bigger than what I thought, so I'm going to do a barbecue rub. I thought that would be pretty good. So this barbecue rub is pretty simple. It's just some brown sugar, a little bit of smoked paprika. I want that smoky taste in there. With some cayenne pepper, a little bit of ground ginger, cumin. M-M-S-G. And then lastly, a little bit of salt, black pepper, and whisk this thing up. That's our barbecue rub. Now I'm just gonna take the rub and brush the rub onto all of the wings, and then we're gonna throw these into an air fryer at like 425 degrees is what I think I did, for about 15 minutes. We wanna cook these pretty solid through. We want the skins to be crispy. Look at these, look at the way they're coming out. I mean, these look amazing. They look like chicken wings. Now, just like always, let's see what Monica has to say. Now, the first one that we're gonna try is the seitan with rice paper skin. Oh, mm, my God. Very good. Mm hmm. Good, right? Mm hmm. These came out pretty good. We were pretty happy with them. So now let's try out the seitan with the Ooh. soy skin. That was much crispier, as you can hear. Love it. Mm hmm. Not bad. Mm hmm. Okay. Now the jackfruit and soy skin. Mm. Mm. Every time the jackfruit. Mm hmm. The jackfruit is so good. So now the jackfruit and rice paper. I think this is going to mm. be the winner. Really good. I love it. Now I just wanted to find out what Monica thought about the skin. Soy skin or rice paper? Yeah, you know, it's so hard for me because I love both of them. I just think I like the soy skin better. The soy skin. But I mean, that's just a really close guess because I just love both of them. Now the soy skin was weird to put on, but really once it cooked, it ended up cooking up pretty well. So I, I wasn't really surprised that Monica liked the soy skin better. She always does. For me, I think the rice paper was my winner, but either way, they were both really great. Let's see what meat she liked the best. The jackfruit wins 100% I mean, for me. Like I love the jackfruit. I love the way that the soy skin and the rice paper yeah. crunch or bite or smoothly like break when you have the jackfruit. The seitan's great too, it's just super dense. And I have to be honest, it always has a little bit of a bready flavor. So I can tell, you know, not that I can't, I mean, I can tell with jackfruit, it just jackfruit resembles it so much better for me mm -hmm. and just tastes better and I just, I just love it all together. I'm just like chowing down on it. Yeah, so for me, 100% was the jackfruit. The jackfruit was the absolute winner. The seitan was really good and everybody enjoys seitan in different ways. As far as the skin, I say the rice paper. Monica says the soy skin. Normally, I would say the soy skin would be the better one. But in this scenario, I just for some reason, I liked the rice paper. But that's all I got, faux bones. Thanks for sponsoring today's video and providing me with some really awesome bones for my meat.